So welcome back everybody to the subsequent, the second episode of our special together with Michael Bretthauer interviewing Tony Castells about his landmark paper FIT versus colonoscopy for colorectal cancer screening. And we have just explained the results of the study mortality wise and incidence wise both were equal. So Michael, there are a lot of other questions in conjunction with such a big study and, and I think one of the main messages to everybody, if you want to have a top study, a top paper, I think you have to take time. Huh? The study took a long time, 10-15 years, uh, like the Nordic trial. And Michael, you are the right person to ask the right questions about the background because you exactly know what's going on. Yeah, and, and thank you, thank you, Thomas, and welcome back, everybody. Uh, here for for the next ten minutes, we are interested in um, picking Tony's brain about the story behind the story. Uh, the Lancet paper is out. Uh, we now know the results of the Colon Pref trial, um, but as you just said, Thomas, this is an enormous amount of work. It it, it requires a lot of um courage to do this it requires money it requires time it requires commitment so i would like to know tony i mean you did the first screening all the colonoscopies and the first screening round more than 10 years back i think you started in 2009 and 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 now it's 2025 and let's just let's just be reminded everybody back then colonoscopy was not as accepted it is, as, as it is today, it, especially in Europe. So, so tell us, Tony, when you came first, you and your colleagues came first up with the idea to have such a trial, what were the reactions uh, around you with the funders, with your colleagues uh, in, in Spain? What did people say? Did they say, you are crazy, this can never be done? Or did they say, oh, great, just do it? Well, I think that uh, we, you should explain uh, many times the, the, the purpose of the study, because uh, as you mentioned, we are talking uh, that the study is starting in 2009, but we start planning the study in 2006, because uh, it, it needs uh, some time to, to secure money. It was not easy. Uh, you know that sometimes it's difficult to do this uh, study, that there, are, there is no any pharma uh, behind it. I mean, that we are comparing to a strategy. I mean, that the, the most in the, the audience that are uh, the interest the most is the public health system, and the, the public health system cannot afford this kind of a study. That means that uh, we should uh, uh, try uh, different uh, agency. Unfortunately, we get some money. We got some money from the, the Spanish Association Against Cancer. Uh, that that is a charity that uh, subsidized the, the study at the beginning and also at uh, at the end of the study. At that moment, was uh, was quite difficult to perform this uh, so big study, especially because, uh, as I mentioned before, in the vast majority of the country of the Spain, there were no screening program uh, going on. I mean that uh, uh, you, you know that this study was performed in eight regions, and at the beginning there are uh, or there were only three out of eight that has a, a screening program. That means that it was a little bit difficult to convince uh, authorities to to uh, uh, get involved in this trial. We should advocate in favor of uh, prevention. I mean that you remember in 2006, we create an alliance that we call uh, Spanish Alliance for Cancer, Colorectal Cancer Prevention, that we join many societies, scientific societies, uh, uh, in order to uh, promote screening in, in Spain. And we uh, uh, work very hard and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm proud because uh, I think that the effort that we made uh, at the beginning that wasn't related with the study, but was in parallel. Uh, uh, the, the final goal was to promote a screening in Spain, and we got it. I mean that I don't remember it was in 2012 or 13 that this colorectal cancer screening was included in the, in the uh, national health uh, system. That means that uh, uh, both uh, uh, initiatives were in parallel. Actually, in, in Barcelona, I, I used the, 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 the trial uh, in order to uh, spoke to the Catalan uh, uh, authorities, the, to the Catalan uh, health uh, ministry, in order to uh, ask if I am allowed 
to extend the Catalan program in, in Barcelona city because right. we, want, we need this uh, population to do the study and they say okay go ahead but uh, we at that moment we're not sure that we can uh, we could afford the, the cost of this screening program but I mean the, that uh, is, is a long story that I want to make short at that moment <laughs> but uh, I, I think that at the end is a nice story so 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 in a way the trial also or was intertwined with with the building up of this the screening programs in the in different regions in Spain. So the trial helped the program and the programs helped the trials. Is that correct to say? Exactly. That, that is very good because uh, uh, it allows us to, to do the study. But at the same time, as you probably may imagine, uh, 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 that was, a, it was a, also a problem because, because of the coexistence of the study and the institutional program makes some contamination in both arms of the study. Uh, as uh, I mentioned before, that is a very long one. We call it a pragmatic study because we, that is, a, is the real situation that we are facing in a population-based screening, but has this uh, problem, let me say, that is the potential contamination by the, the institutional screening program. Yeah, and, uh, and what I wonder, so you start a trial, you when you start a trial like this, you have to do a lot of colonoscopies. It goes from zero to several thousand. And and, and you're in a situation where screening is just starting in some regions. Others others don't have anything. So, so it must have been difficult to build up the capacity for colonoscopy or and also to assure, because this is a clinical trial, you want the highest quality to ensure that all colonoscopies really have a very good quality of the colonoscopies. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm certain that must have been a lot of work for you and your colleagues. Yes, uh, it was very, was very uh, difficult. I, I remember that when we talked the first time with Enrique Quintero, that is the co-principal uh, investigator of this study, we were very concerned about the, the, the capacity. Uh, we, we involved uh, many people, many investigators. We, we, we did uh, this colonoscopy that was in two-year period, more or less, that was the, the, the time that in, in involved the, the, the first uh, round. We involved uh, 15 centers and uh, many uh, endoscopies that are highly qualified. I mean that we require people that are doing colonoscopy in a, in a very with a very high quality to be involved because that was uh, critical and and we did. As you mentioned, that is a long uh, uh, study. Uh, just to give you a, a, a figure, there were four people, four colleagues that were acting as a principal investigator in each region that over the, the study period, they get uh, they got retired. I mean, that is not so common that uh, <laughs> uh, 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 a study spend uh, a, a very important part of your professional life doing this, uh, uh, this uh, trial. That's true. I have a mentor, Hansu Lovadami, uh, who is professor at Karolinska in Stockholm. He said, the most important things when you do these long-term trials is to pick the youngest people to be the principal investigator because everybody <laughs> will be dead when the trial is done. <laughs> right. That so let very, me ask you another, yes, another nightmare often, uh, and I know this from experience, is when you've done everything correctly and it, it was it's worked okay with all the screening, then you wait and then the big question is, do you get all the data in at the end? Uh, uh any any problems or or stories there or or was the data catch at the end of the 10 years was that uncomplicated no it was uh, you you can imagine that it's uh, complicated to do this kind of analysis because we collect prospectively many of this information but uh, we want to make sure that there was no any bias that means that at the end of the study we check uh, the the national uh, uh, mortality registry and many other uh, sources in order to see of course that uh, uh, or especially those uh, what happened outside of the uh, uh, participant, uh, out of the participant. I mean, this, uh, as I mentioned, there were more people that didn't, did not participate in the study. I will, yeah, and we want to make sure that uh, uh, 
nothing happened or, or what happened in this part of the population. That means that joining all this information takes, uh, took uh, a long time. We spent almost two years to verify, to double check all this information. Uh, we are really proud because we involved uh, a large number of data, data collector and data manager that they did an extraordinary work. And uh, well, at the end, we were very co uh, uh, confident that the results were the, the right one. Yeah, so, so one of the take home messages, I think, to have a very, very good infrastructure, have the right people around around you that help you with that over the entire period of time. Yes. But it's also, if I may add, it's, uh, I think the, the principal investigators, you two guys, I think you had a lot to do, right? So what did you do? Writing Christmas cards, calling people, inviting them to dinner, threatening them? <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, yeah you're, you're right. I, I, I don't know if that is uh, if I can say in this interview, but I think that we uh, we did uh, a lot of fun doing this study. I mean that we have the opportunity to share with uh, colleagues that at the moment they are friends because we we did many times during this long period of time some meetings, some dinners, some lunches. Uh, in order to uh, to share our concern, but also also to enjoy this opportunity to to work all together. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. This is one of the keys, I think, to to keep people happy, to make them feel that you are part of a group that achieves or try to achieve something big. I think is very important. I like cakes. I like to deliver cakes <laughs> to people. People like to eat cake. Uh, I, th I I I like that. One question at the end, Tony. Are you still friends with everybody in the trial and the surrounding? Yes, yes, I think so. That's great. Can I can I add one one uh, f fundamental question? If if you look at the huge budgets of uh, uh, medical research in the U EU, individual countries, and and you two guys, you have this study with sixty to hundred thousand people over fifteen years. So as a naive person, one would expect they were funded with 150 million euros each. Is uh, Was that the case? No, no, no. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not the case. I don't know, Michael. You are, you are richer than me. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> our trial was much less expensive than the numbers you yeah. you mentioned, Thomas. I think it was it was below below 10 million euro, which is cheap, I think, for such a trial. I don't know what you calculated for your trial, Tony. I, we, I, I don't have to have any, uh, exact figures. I just wanted to to put my finger into that round because I think uh, that's two of the most important trials in gastroenterology, right? And uh, they're mostly based on uh, individual enthusiasm, but not on a big budget. Yeah, you, you are right. I, I think that, uh, well, probably we had more money than we really had. Maybe sometimes it's uh, going to be a little bit easier to do this uh, study. But, well, I, I think that we 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 got it. And at that moment, we're happy uh, to have done. Exciting story. And, um, and we can maybe mention at the end, Tony, that you are... You will continue to follow these people, and we are looking forward to more publications from from this trial in the in the years to come. So, so congratulations, Ian, and, and and thank you so much for joining us today, Thomas. Thank you, thank you both. Uh, there were two brilliant episodes, and uh, we are very much looking forward to welcome you again, uh, Tony, on a follow up topic or anything else. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to, to speak here and to, to thank all people involved in the study, because uh, without them, it was not, uh, it has not been possible to do it.